In today's video, we're checking out the Live Pro L1 multi-format HDMI video mixer and live switching system. Let's get into it. Welcome to the channel, my name's Shane. In today's video, we're checking out the Feel World Live Pro L1 4 HDMI input switching system. Now, the majority of this video will be shot using this and recorded directly to OBS on my PC using Windows 10. I'm also then going to be sending a feed out into my laptop on the table, which will show you the preview window so you can see all of the different shots. Now, I've shot this video over the course of three days. I didn't just rush this out, and I've had a good chance to test this in a number of different situations. And I've found some things about it that might be an absolute deal breaker, while some might be perfect for certain situations. So there's three main reasons if you're a YouTuber, for example, you might want something like this. The first one is it will upgrade you from a Logitech web camera or whatever it is you're using to a mirrorless camera. This will be detected as a webcam. You don't need any extra software and you can stream directly to the web in much superior quality. The second reason you might want this as a content creator is that live switching saves editing time. So if you're not big into editing, but you wanna capture high quality video from your mirrorless cameras and save on that editing time, you can record directly into OBS and or at the same time or at a later date, use it just to stream from OBS to the web by any number of services. The other way the Live Pro can be used is an offline switching tool going to a projector, which means you can have say three or four cameras on a band and project that up onto a larger monitor or screen thanks to that HDMI output. I'm gonna give you my pros and cons in this review because as it stands right now, this unit isn't quite perfect, but there's a lot to like about it and I think it has a lot of potential. A massive thank you to Feel World for sending this out for the review. If you wanna find out more about it, Links will be in the description below. Stay tuned till the end because I give you my final thoughts about it, recorded three or four days after the fact. Let's get into it. In today's video, I'm gonna shoot this one a little bit differently. Usually I dump multiple cameras off into Final Cut and then I edit those. But in today's video, you're gonna see just how this Live Pro L1 HDMI switching system works. And I've currently got the output going into OBS on my PC and that's the video that you're looking at. It's recording at 1080p, but I'm gonna upscale it to 4K, but it works through OBS. So any streaming service that's compatible with OBS that you can then input a streaming key to, it will then have no problems getting it to the web. So it'll work with Twitch and all those other type of services as well. But there's some things about this that might not make it perfect for gamers, and we'll talk a little bit about that in just a moment. Now, I've had a lot of experience with switches. I currently own the A10 Mini, and I also have the YOLO box. I've also owned the A10 Mini Pro. The Live Pro is somewhere in the middle of both of them. It's more functional and powerful in some ways and far less powerful and functional in other ways. So let's talk about the inputs and outputs on the back of the Live Pro. So we get four HDMI inputs here. I currently have three Panasonic cameras connected to it and one Super NES Mini. So this will work with gaming consoles or whatever you wanna plug into it. And the great thing about it is it will scale even 4K back to 1080p, which it then will transmit out to 1080p. I really like that. Even the 720p signal coming in from my Super Nintendo Mini will be upscaled as an output back to 1080p. So I really like that. I think that's a really great addition. Now, if we take a look at the other side of the unit over here, we get a USB 3 port, which I've currently got connected to my MacBook Air here, which is recording in QuickTime, QuickTime on the preview window. And I'll show you more about that in a moment. We also have an ethernet port over here as well for enhanced connectivity. And we have a line level input and a line level output. One of the standout features when it comes to the Live Pro L1 has to be this two inch TFT display. Now this isn't a touchscreen display, but it will allow you to see exactly what's going on and what's currently connected to the unit and what's also live. So in the particular mode that I've got it, which doesn't take advantage of this T bar or transition bar here, we can basically see everything that's currently connected and the red box is the one that's actually being used as the output, the current selected one. And you can also see that thanks to the buttons on the unit as well. It makes it really easy to see exactly what you're using just at the touch of a button. Now the audio that you're hearing throughout this part, portion of the video is my shirt microphone being recorded to my camera and I'll sync that up in post because I wanna get more into the audio. I need a bit more space when we get to the audio part of this video. One of my personal favorite things about this unit is the fact we get the USB output over here and the HDMI output on the back. The reason why this is an advantage is because you can select what each of them do. 
You can just use one or the other if you so choose, or you can assign, say, the HDMI output to be the program, which is what your audience will see if you're streaming or recording in OBS like I am now. So that's how I've got that working through my Elgato HD60. It's just being recorded on Windows 10. I then have the USB 3 going to my MacBook Air, so I can see it in preview mode, which shows me all the inputs that are active currently. Now this opens up a world of opportunities. You can use one or the other or assign one over the other. You don't have to use it in this particular configuration or you can just use one. That's pretty cool. It means you've got the flexibility of not having, you know, spaghetti cables all over the place. So there's two different ways you can switch on this device. The first one is in fast mode, which I prefer. It means it's much more like the A10 mini in that regard. I can just push buttons and it will allow me to switch cameras and switch views at the touch of a button. So for me, this is the easiest way. Now there's another way you can do it as well. If you go into the uh, switching options here, change this from fast to T-bar. Now we can transition by using the bar that's on the front here. So the way this will work now, see how we've got the red on number three. If we wanna to switch to number two, we can hit two and that will come up in yellow over here. Then we can simply move this and it will fade or cross fade across the two and it will work no matter where we do this. We just have to keep moving it this way. For me, this is a little more tedious, <laughs> but if you're coming from a background where this is commonplace and you've been doing switching for years, you might prefer this. But for me personally, I don't really like using this anywhere near as much as just pushing a button to get the switch to happen. One of the great things about this unit though is you can choose from a number of different wipes which I'll show you right now. So let me show you some of the effects on the unit now. If we push this button once, it will go to the mix and then we use this control over here to decide which type of transition we want. Now I'm gonna show you a few of these and to select them, you just push down on this button. It's nice and intuitive. And then you can just use this to switch between scenes. I'm gonna just show you a few. This should push from the left. Yep, push down. Transition down, yep, perfect. It's diagonally from the left top. Yep, perfect. This one looks really cool. Here we go. And these are all based on how fast you move the bar. So if I move this really slowly, as you can see, the transition's a lot slower. And it feels really good to use this bar. It's nice and easy. There's no resistance on it. There's just enough resistance. It's not resistance free, but it feels good is what I'm getting at. This one looks good as well. I had a pl good play with these yesterday. I like this one as well. This will definitely appeal to some people. So you get a lot of different transitions at the touch of a button that make this a lot easier. And you can just decide which one you want and you can leave it on, the, on your favorite one. Now, one thing that I did notice with this is the fade, oops, <laughs> is the fade and the cut are basically the same. That's because I didn't get all the way over to the transition before I tried to move it. So if we go to cut and I use this bar, it still does a transition. I, I don't notice any difference between fade and cut. They're basically the same. Now, one of the things I showed you before is that I had it set so I'm using this T-bar here now, but I don't actually like using it. So I'm gonna go back to fast. And then we can also change the duration of how fast we want that transition with this, the fastest time being 0.5 seconds and it goes up to five seconds. So you can decide how fast you want those transitions. For me personally, I like them to be as fast as possible because it just makes it more intuitive when you're switching and if you're monitoring yourself in real time, like I am with the monitor back over here, it's good to know exactly what's on screen at the touch of a button. So I prefer it in fast mode, no questions about it, but the transitions are very, very usable. Up next, I'm gonna show you picture in picture mode and why this is great. So I'm gonna switch over to this camera right now and this is the benefit of a picture in picture system. As you can see, we're on uh, number two right now, which is the overhead shot of the unit itself. Now, if we push this button three times, it takes us down to picture in picture and then we can simply assign what we want and where we want it. So we can add something to the center of the screen, which is me, but this is not the ideal placement, right? So, but it's there if you so choose to use it, but we can move this to the top left. All these little icons on the screen here indicate where you are placing the picture in picture. Now, these first five are actually really good. So the center one and all the ones in the corner, and then they get really weird. So this next one seems to stretch the 
ratio of the video into a square. I don't really like these. These are split screen effects that definitely need some work and upgrade. I, I don't know why they did this. I actually recompressed this shot in post the other day just to make sure that's what was happening and it seems to stretch the image. So all of these bottom ones and the split screen are next to useless in the current format, but I'm sure they'll fix that with a firmware upgrade. But it's great to see that these picture-in-picture -picture modes work really, really well. And to turn them off, all you need to do is go over to the off button and you, you are done. So it's that simple to get picture-in-picture. -picture. Just stay away from those split screen effects as of this particular version of the firmware. They're not very good. <laughs> Let's talk about the audio. Now, when it comes to the Live Pro L1, it's got its advantages in one way and also some severe disadvantages. The advantage of it is, as of right now, the line level inputs on the left of the unit are really usable with a mixer. Now, this will make it perfect if you're doing a live switching podcast and it automatically syncs your audio with your HDMI signal. Usually, there's an offset of a couple of milliseconds because digital that digital conversion process within the HDMI is slightly behind that of real-time audio, but this handles that for you. You don't need to worry about it, and I'll show you that in a moment. Now, it has two audio modes. The other mode essentially allows you to follow the camera, and that's what I've got it set to right now. And I'm, as I switch cameras on the unit, it will follow the camera's audio around. That's kind of okay sometimes, but not okay a lot of the time, especially in an interview situation where you might want both people's audio to be mixed at different levels. So it doesn't have the capability to say, set the Super Nintendo up with a volume at one level and then you know my talking voice at another level. So for gamers, it's a little bit of a deal breaker in my opinion in that scenario, but who this is for is definitely for podcasting. So I'm gonna show you how to set it up so it works with a mixer. It's nice and simple. All we need to do is go into the menu option uh, over here, and then we go down to audio, and change it from embedded to external. Now what this will do, we got to plug into this now with my Rode Procaster and just a little Behringer mixer to show the audio quality. What you're listening to right now is the Rode Procaster going through my Zenix 802 mixer into the Live Pro being synced in real time with my HDMI feed. So now as I switch between cameras, you're gonna be hearing the Rode Procaster. Now this will appeal to certain people doing certain types of videos, podcasting in particular, this is gonna be an absolute lifesaver. You can get four people in a podcast and get a four channel mixer, plug it in and get great quality audio. If you've got rack unit gear like a DBX286S or something like that, you could run it into a mixer, then out from the mixer into the Live Pro L1 and get some really great quality audio. I think this is really well suited as of right now to people doing podcasts. If it had the flexibility to be able to also manage the audio settings for each of the individual inputs and then mix them on the fly, that would be fantastic. But as of right now, I'm unable to find any information on how to do that. I spent a few days looking into it as well and about two hours looking for some software in English and I had no luck. Now I'm interrupting my own video just to give you some information that I noticed in editing. Now I didn't want to mislead anyone with the information. So the first day I shot this video within this 3.5 millimeter jack, I just had a wireless pack plugged directly into it. Now while the audio wasn't very loud, I did notice that when I watched this part of it back on the video that you've probably seen up until this point, it was slightly out of sync. But the first day that I did it without the mixer, it wasn't out of sync. So there's something going on there. I don't know if that's hardware related on my computer side because the video file got so big through OBS. It could just be that. But yeah, I just wanted to throw that in because now I'm slightly uncertain whether or not that's going to be an issue all of the time or whether that's an issue on my side. Now, one of the key advantages of this unit is you can pretty much plug anything into it and get that HD output. So I've tried this with 720p, I've tried it with 1080, I've tried 24 frames per second, 25, 30, and 60, and it works no problems at all. One of the best things about it is I don't have to keep changing my camera. The fact that I can plug a 4K output into this and it will automatically downsample it back to its maximum of 1920 by 1080 is fantastic and it's a, a huge time saver. I don't often stream in a multi-camera format like this, so I don't wanna to have to keep changing my camera settings every time I, I wanna use it for either recording in my other studio room or doing a live stream. I'm gonna leave my camera set up exactly the same and this will handle all of the conversions. I love how that's set up. Right now I'm gonna give you my pros and cons of the Live Pro L1. 
So I saw a lot of other videos about this unit and they only just scraped the surface. They might've just unboxed them, plonked it on the table and switched around and didn't really show you what it's capable of or some of the inherent issues with it. So the biggest issue I have is the app, I can't get it to work and I can't find an English version of it either. Whether or not that unlocks a lot of the audio capability of this unit, I'm yet to find that out. I have emailed the company, I'm still waiting on a reply to hear back whether that's the case. The second biggest issue I have with the Live Pro is the fact that it only has two audio modes. It has embedded audio, which means every time you change to the next HDMI source, the audio will change with it and that's what your audience will hear. So that's not cool. On the A10 Mini Pro, you can mix say four and number one together and get a mix and that's what your audience will hear. And I think that's fundamental for a good streaming service or setup. Now, the second biggest issue is the fact that it has that external audio option, which sounds great, but it's still out of sync, which means you're gonna have to do some post-production to get that right. Or you can buy devices that will off-sync your audio slightly, but if you don't already have one of those, then you're gonna need one of those. And the fact that you can only use the external audio in that way still doesn't make it perfect for gaming. For example, if someone wants to run an Xbox or something into this at the same time, you have no way of mixing the gaming audio with the voice audio and getting a balance between them both unless you use a mixer and something to off-sync the audio. So overall, it's starting to get a little bit convoluted and com complicated. But what I do like about this is the fact that they will hopefully update and address these inherent issues. I know someone's gonna ask whether or not this can do chroma keying. If you're a gamer, for example, it doesn't do that as of right now. There is an effects button on the front, which they'll unlock some features coming up. I don't know if that will be one of them or not yet, but I know there's at least more software in development and hopefully it will address some of the issues that I've spoken about in this video. So let's end this on a bit of a positive note. I think once the inherent audio issues are fixed, and they also add some sort of mixer that your audience can then hear multiple streams of audio throughout this device. This is gonna be an ATEM Mini killer. Now this has some of the functionality of the ATEM Mini Pro as well, being it's got the preview and program mode. So that's gonna to appeal to a lot of people, but as it stands right now, it's not quite perfect, but it definitely has potential. And as they update this, or once we get a new update for it, and once I have access to the app or the software that works with this, I'll do a follow-up video, but I want to give you my real-world experience review of this as it stands, as of shooting this video, and if the new software comes out tomorrow, I'll reshoot the video. So thanks again for watching. Catch you soon. See ya.